Hello everyone, welcome to the another video in the series of semantic kernel and in this video I will be talking about how can you automatically invoke your functions uh, based on the context using semantic kernel and this exercise we will be doing using Azure OpenAI and Python as a programming language. So let's quickly go ahead and understand the use case first. So what I will be doing is I will be taking a few credit card statements. So let's say this is the one dummy statement which I have picked it from the internet. So we will be passing this particular image to GPT-40 and we'll try to extract the bank name and the amount to be paid. So this is the one statement. Another statement I'm having is this one which is of SunTrust Bank. Again, it's a dummy statement which I have grabbed it from the internet. So whatever the statement we are passing to GPT-4, it will just return you the bank name and the amount which is due. And the same details, once we have that bank uh, name and the amount, we will be passing that to our semantic kernel and that kernel will automatically invoke the function uh, to pay the credit card bill. So the similar exercise we have done earlier in my previous video in which we didn't use a semantic kernel, but I thought to show you how you can execute the same exercise using semantic kernel. So let's quickly have a quick look at my code. So here you will see I have imported some initial packages and these uh, few packages are specifically for the semantic kernel wherein we are uh, taking Azure chat completion. We are talking about the function call behavior because this is the key part which is making this entire thing possible. Then we have our prompt execution settings in which we will provide all the parameters which we need to pass as a prompt. Then we are having a chat history, we are having the kernel arguments and this is the class which I have created, this is the module which I have created, let me quickly show you. So in this class what I have done is, I have just imported these two packages and then I am defining two functions. So the first function is pay to trust and this function will be called whenever you want to pay some uh, uh, balance or whenever you want to pay your credit card bill to the SunTrust uh, bank. Similarly, I have created another function which is for your bank. So whenever GPT-4 is saying that, okay, pay this much amount to your bank, then I'm expecting uh, this to be executed. So these are the two functions I have defined in this particular class and I'm just importing it. So next thing I'm using dot env values because this is uh, I'm, uh, this is the package which is used to read the configuration which is defined in some external file. So in my case, I have created a file config.env and this is a file which is holding details about my endpoint key and like the what is the deployment model we are using. So this is what I'm getting it from here. So once we have everything in the configuration, we can directly use it something like this. Okay, let's continue with the configuration. This next thing I'm doing is defining the system message. So system message is the one which will tell our bot that what it is all about and what it has to do. So I'm saying you are a finance chat bot. Your name is this and you have one goal. Figure out how much credit card bill has to be paid to which bank. And once you have the answer I'm looking for, you will return the full answer to me as soon as possible. And for all the incorrect documents which are not credit card statements, just say I don't know. Don't make up the answer, rather say I don't know. So this is what I have defined under the system message. Then I am instantiating my kernel over here and associating my Azure chat completion service with the kernel. So like kernel is nothing but you can consider it as a dependency injection container which can associate your services and functions, everything to it. So this is what I am doing. I am associating my Azure Chat Completion service to the kernel with all the required parameters. So we have our deployment name, we have our endpoint, API version and the API key. Then I am registering my plugin. So plugin is nothing but the class in which we have defined both the functions. So if you have multiple classes with multiple functions, feel free to add them here as a new line like you can add one more line at line 32 kernel dot add plugin and just register that plugin as well. Now we have our plugin. The next thing we need to do is we need to create a function and then associate that plugin to the kernel. So that thing you can do it using add function 
pass in your prompt which will take your chat history user input your plugin name so this has to be unique and the function name which is again the unique thing i will show you what this is all about then we are defining the execution setting so execution setting is the one which is making this uh, auto function call possible so these are the two lines where we are saying that okay you can go ahead and uh, do auto invocation for my functions based on the plugins which I'm supplying over here and apart from that you can pass in all the required parameters which you want to pass it to the open AI or the Azure open AI so I'm saying max tokens equal to thousand temperature is this one top a if you want any of the penalty parameters you can just furnish it over here moving further here I'm defining a function so definitely you can define all these things also as a function I just kept it outside so feel free to push all of those in a function next thing what I'm doing is I'm creating constructing a client here where for Azure OpenAI which is going to take these key parameters and next thing I need to do is I need to read the statement so this is the directory if you can see on the left hand side statements is the directory which is holding all my statements and from that directory I am reading every single image and just encoding it to the binary so I am just getting the base 64 format of every single image and in the same the function I am also constructing the messages so as it is a short chat so we need to define the proper roles like the system user assistant what are the role you want you have to define it over here so my system uh, what I am saying under system content you are an assistant who can read and analyze credit card statements and based on the analyzed data tell the bank name and the due amount so basically what we are saying is don't tell me any other information except the credit card statement name and the oh sorry the bank name and the amount due then under the user content we need to pass the image URL and then the URL is the value of the URL is nothing but the base 64 encoding which we have just generated in our line number 61 okay now we have that uh, what we are going to do is we are going to create the history uh, construct the object for the history and then we are going to construct the kernel argument so kernel argument is going to take few parameters the one which I am passing here is the execution settings which we have defined here so this is the execution settings which we are passing as a kernel arguments and here is the most important thing oh, okay before that there is a line number 80 so this user input is nothing but the response which we have received from our gpt 40 model which is the content extracted from the image and if I'm saying content the content it means the credit card uh, statements bank name as well as the amount due so this is the information which is uh, holding inside this particular variable content so I am passing that same information as it is as an in user input without tweaking it and then I'm in asking a kernel to invoke the required function so this is going to take arguments so argument is holding my user input as well as chat history so to be specific I'm not utilizing chat history in this but I'm demonstrating you so that you can use it in your use case and maintain the history in my case it is not of much use because I am just running a single instance of it so if I will execute this particular file so let me go to the terminal and execute it before that I can show you the statement so this is the statement which I am passing as an input so your bank and the amount is 3663.23 so here is the output it is saying I am from your bank and this is the amount which has been successfully processed now how this message is coming is from my function this is the function so for demo purpose I have just printed it out but when you are building a real application definitely you have to make a call to the respective API which can make the payment for you next thing is let me change this file to some other bank statement let's say this first one so this is from the SunTrust let's execute this one 
and it should come up with the message which I have mentioned in my send trust function. So here is the response. I am from SunTrust and payment of this has been successfully processed. So I am from SunTrust is again coming from here. It means definitely system has or the kernel has invoked this function and not this one. And again, like it is saying successfully processed, it is based on the description which I am saying that this is what is my return type. So if you want to make it more specific, you can define your return and something here in this. So you will get the better response rather than just coming, uh, just showing it like the payment of this has been made successfully. So if you want to change it, you can definitely return the response accordingly from here and kernel will take care of it. So I hope you got an idea how we can combine two systems like extracting the details using GPT-40 and using the same model we can also invoke the functions dynamically or at the runtime using semantic kernel feature. I hope you enjoyed watching this and do let me know if this is the use case you are looking for. Thanks for watching.